The Messenger وسلم, has in fact informed us of several matters that will bring hasra, regret, on the Day of Judgment. And we will mention just six of those today so that we know the roadmap, we know exactly how to prepare and to spare ourselves and our families from the regret of the Day of Regret. What are these six things? Number one, those who do not give Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2 of the Quran, its due attention. Isn't that a strange one? When the rewards are distributed on the Day of Judgment to the people of the Quran and specifically to the people of Surah Al-Baqarah, those who had ignored Surah Al-Baqarah will be taken by regret. Thus the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, as Imam Muslim narrates in his Sahih on the authority of Abi Umamat Al-Bahili, he said, اِخْرَأُوا سُورَةَ الْبَقَرَةِ فَإِنَّ أَخْذَهَا بَرَكَةِ وَتَرْكَهَا حَسْرَةِ وَلَا تَسْتَطِيعُهَا الْبَقَرَةِ He said, always recite Surah Al-Baqarah. Because taking care of this surah is a barakah, it is a blessing. And not doing so would be a regret on the Day of Judgment. And the magicians are not able to overcome it. This is the first, the first source of regret. As for the second source of regret, this is in relation to any gathering, whether with family or friends or online, where the name of Allah Almighty is not mentioned. Thus the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says as Abi Dawood narrates in his Sunan, on the authority of Abi Huraira, مَا مِن قَوْمٍ يَقُومُونَ مِن مَجْلِسٍ لَا يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ تَعَالَ فِيهِ إِلَّا قَامُوا عَنْ مِثْلِ جِيفَةِ حِمَارٍ وَكَانَ عَلَيْهِمْ حَسْرًا يَعْنِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ He said any people who sit in a gathering whereby they do not remember the name of Allah Almighty or mention Him in any way, Except that when they leave that gathering, it would have been as if they were sat around the dead body of a donkey. And that gathering will be regret for them on the Day of Judgment. Subhanallah. Any gathering where we sit together and we fail to mention the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to prevent a haram that was taking place in front of us, that gathering will be regret on the Day of Standing. What about number three? The third cause of regret is with regards to those individuals who aspired for positions of authority. They wanted to be in the limelight. They wanted people to clap for them. They sought after attention and praise. And that is why the Prophet ﷺ, he says, as our mother Aisha narrates in the hadith of Sahih al-Bukhari, إِنَّكُمْ سَتَحْرِصُونَ عَلَى الْإِمَارَةِ وَإِنَّهَا سَتَكُونُ حَسْرَةً وَنَدَامَةً فَنِعْمَةٍ مُرْضِعَةً وَبِئْسَةٍ فَاطِمَةً He said, O oh Muslims, you will soon start competing over positions of authority. And on the day of judgment, that's going to bring with it regret. So how great is breastfeeding? And how difficult is weaning? What is that all about, that last sentence? The Messenger وسلم, is comparing positions of authority and those who always want it with the breastfeeding child who is always receiving its nutrition and its milk readily available from its mother with no effort from itself. But there has to come a day when that child must be weaned, when that milk has to come to a stop. And similarly, those who aspire for positions of authority and status in the community, despite not being deserving of it and not possessing the credentials, their wealth and their prestige and their honor will have to come to a stop at one point. And that will be on the Day of Judgment. When wealth and prestige will be replaced, replaced with regret for aspiring for a position that you are not fit for. As for the fourth cause of regret, this will be with regards to a person who puts forward acts of worship. But they contain within them hidden elements of showing off. This is a person who has dedicated years upon years of what he called worship and Qur'an and Salah and Taraweeh and Qiyam and fasting and dhikr and da'wah and a flawless hijab and enjoining good and forbidding evil and Islamic events and Islamic reminders and Islamic posts and they see these good deeds in the form of mountains on the Day of Judgment, beautiful mountains and to his horror, they begin to crumble before his very eyes. Can you imagine their regret? 
That is because those good deeds, although they were huge, but they had holes within them. They were rotten. They had holes of showing off. They had show, holes of pride, holes of self-admiration, holes of self-promotion. Look at me, what I am doing, what I am up to, where I am found, what I am reciting, where I am praying. Holes of showing off. Thus those deeds come crumbling down on the day of judgment, causing regret. As Allah Almighty said, وَبَدَى لَهُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ مَا لَمْ يَكُونُوا يَحْتَسِبُونَ they will see there with Allah Almighty that which they did not expect, Allah says. One of the scariest ayat from the Qur'an as some of our predecessors, they said. As for the fifth cause of regret, and I hope dear brothers and sisters that we are taking note of these mental notes of these broad heading. This is a road map for preparation. As for the fifth cause of regret, this is when you find yourself being forced on the Day of Judgment to hand over your good deeds to somebody else. Or when you are forced to carry the sins of somebody, sins that you didn't even commit. Can you imagine what that means? Imagine on Yawm Al-Qiyamah you are forced by the angels to hand over 2,000, 3,000 salawat, 3,000 prayers to somebody else, to your neighbor. Can you imagine handing over two or three or ten Ramadan's worth of hard work and thirst and sacrifice to somebody else who didn't do it? Can you imagine? Worse still, can you imagine carrying the sins of people, sins that you didn't commit? Imagine reading your book on the Day of Judgment and you find zina, fornication, Allah. You find adultery, you find alcohol, you find interest, you find pornography, you find sins that you didn't commit. Others have transferred them onto you. And now you have to find an answer before Allah for these sins that you didn't do. How can that situation take place? By oppressing another Muslim. By wronging another individual. Thus the Messenger وسلم, says in the famous hadith which Imam al-Bukhari writes on the authority of Abi Hurayr. Man kanat indahu maghlamatun li akhi min ardihi aw min shay'i فَلْيَتَحَلَّلْهُ مِنْهُ الْيَوْمِ قَبْلَ أَنْ لَا يَكُونَ دِينَارٌ وَلَا دِرْحَمٌ إِنْ كَانَ لَهُ عَمَلٌ صَالِحٌ أُخِذَ مِنْهُ بِقَدْرِ مَظْلَمَتِهِ وَإِنْ لَمْ تَكُنْ لَهُ حَسَنَاتٍ أُخِذَ مِنْ سَيِّئَاتِ صَاحِبِهِ فَطُرِحَتْ عَلَيْهِ وَفِي رِوَايَةٍ ثُمَّ طُرِحَ فِي النَّارِ He said, whoever of you has wronged his brother in any way, whether in regards to his honor or any other way, then make sure you beg his forgiveness today before a day comes where there will be no dinar and no dirham. In other words, today we can settle our scores with the pound and the dollar. On Yom Al Qiyamah, there will be no pound and dollar, dinar and dirham. It will be the exchange of good deeds and the transferring of sins. So he says, whoever of you has wronged his brother in any way, with regards to his honor or any other way, then let him beg his forgiveness before a day comes when there will be no dinar and dirham. He said, if you have good deeds on that day, he will be allowed to take from your good deeds depending on the size of your wrongdoing. If however your good deeds, they run out before you pay your debt, then he will be allowed to transfer his sins onto you. This is one of the most frightening and disturbing realities of the Day of Judgment, Wallah. The reality that states, you and I cannot give a single good deed to the people we love the most. Your mother, your father, your wife, your children, they will ask you and you will refuse because you need that good deed just as much as they do. Whilst on the other hand, some people will be forced to give over their good deeds to the people they hate and they despise because they had backstabbed them, mocked them, conspired against them, plotted against them, failed to pay their wages on time, or any other type of wrongdoing. He said, let him beg his forgiveness today. This is the cause of regret number five, the oppression or any wrongdoing towards another individual. We know who they are. And number six, number six, generally speaking, and this is the overarching cause of regret that summarizes everything you just heard. Any Muslim individual who falls short, with regards to the minutes, hours of his days and his weeks in building the hereafter. That is going to be a cause of regret. 
person who was urged week in, week out, every Friday, every reminder to drop the sins, to replace the haram with halal, to remove the intoxicant, to change sin into obedience, to reshuffle the cards, to refocus your attention on Allah and the home of the hereafter, to set a vision in life in preparation for Jannah, and they fail to do so. That will be a major cause for regret, as people will be heard saying on the Day of Judgment, Ya laytani qaddamtu li hayati. I wish that I had prepared for my life. In conclusion, dear brother, dear sister, every individual who turns a blind eye and pretends that the day of regret is not coming is going to be in a major and excruciatingly painful state of regret on the day of judgment. What greater regret can there be in life than failing to impress the King Allah Almighty? What greater regret can there be in life than failing the exam before the King Allah and missing out on the prize that comes with passing the prize of Jannah? What greater regret can there be than that? What greater regret can there be in existence than being shown your place in Jannah and the luxuries and the weather and the palaces and the spouses but then being transferred to oblivion to Jahannam instead? What greater regret can there be in life then meeting your friends on the day of judgment, those whom you knew today, and they find no words for you and I, except, didn't I tell you? Didn't I tell you?